Hi guys. It is just a blah, gray, depressing day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on Columbus Day 2020. As we mark, what is it, how many, what year, marking October 12th, 1492, one of the single darkest days in the history of humanity, uh, when the collapse of Western civilization began the day it started. But I'm not going to sit here and get into all of that. Uh, let's just see. I don't know. We're just going to sense. Uh, oh, yeah, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza bringing you the uh, Columbus Day 2020. Just uh, a few of the tidbits from my email and the mainstream media today. I think we're going to start right here on the mainstream media. Uh, let's see, there's so many to, so many to, <coughs> to choose from. How about this one? Uh, What's on the mind of the UN today? Climate change largely to blame for a near doubling of natural disasters since the year 2000, says the UN. So just in case you were unaware of this, let the UN explain it to you. <sighs> Climate change is largely responsible for a doubling in the number of natural Disaster since the year 2000, the UN said on Monday, warning that our planet is becoming uninhabitable for millions of people. Three quarters of a billion more people were imperiled by disasters over the past two decades than in the 20 years before that. The UN's Office for Disaster Risk Reduction said, calling humanity, quote, willfully destructive, close quote, the report said the data was a wake-up call to governments who have failed to take the threat of climate change seriously or to prepare for a growing number of natural disasters. Quoting the report, quote, It is baffling that we willingly and knowingly continue to sow the seeds of our own destruction, despite the scientific evidence that we are turning our only home into an un- inhabitable hell for millions of people. <laughs> yes, thank you United Nations uh, for letting us know that we are turning our only home into an unimaginable hell for millions of people. I would change one letter of that statement from M to B but, you know, I always love how the mainstream media, you know, they'll, they'll give you one story, like this is from the Telegraph, and then they'll say, if you enjoyed that story, then maybe you will enjoy this. So if you enjoyed the story about our planet being turned into an unimaginable hell for millions or billions of people, perhaps they, they turn you, uh, you might enjoy this one church burns altar where priest had sex with two women. Yes, a Catholic church in Pearl River, Louisiana has burned the altar where its former pastor was caught having sex with two women. Yes, uh, <clears throat> the former pastor at St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church, Travis Clark has been removed from his ministry and is no longer on the payroll. 
Uh, Clark, age 37, was arrested September 30th with Mindy Dixon and Melissa Chang on obscenity charges after a passerby reported seeing the three having sex on the church's altar. Police confiscated sex toys, stage lights, and two recording devices from inside the church, uh, said Archbishop Gregory uh, Amond of New Orleans, uh, quote, his behavior was obscene, his des desecration of the altar is demonic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> All right, from there, let's go back uh, to our Rolodex. And how about world's biggest Arctic mission returns to Germany warning of ice-free summers within decades. Decades. <coughs> Let's see. Scientists returning from the world's biggest mission to the North Pole have warned that the Arctic is dying and soon will be ice-free in the summer. Yes, the expedition which set off last September and returned on Monday found that the ice was, quote, badly eroded, melted, thin, and brittle. One of the uh, climatologists, uh, mission leader Marcus Rex, quote, We witnessed how the Arctic Ocean is dying. We saw this process right outside our windows. And if you enjoyed that story, you might also enjoy Phil Collins once his ex-wife turned live-in girlfriend to vacate his Miami mansion. Oh, this is messy, beyond messy, like War of the Roses 2020 style. Yes, apparently Phil Collins and his ex-wife, his third ex-wife, turned, we think, estranged girlfriend are at odds yet again. Ah! Oh, Jesus. Uh, a couple of you uh, have sent me this... Uh, this story out of the Guardian yesterday, uh, a couple of my alert listeners about uh, collapsology. Ah, good Lord, I thought uh, maybe it's the last rose of summer uh, doing this flying up my nose here. Anyway, uh, I appreciate you sending me this article, but, but I could swear I already covered this article uh, a couple of months ago. So anyway, I'm just not going to repeat uh, pretty much everything I said in a similar uh, video a couple of months ago. But I did want to share this, uh, this one paragraph out of the... Uh, the middle of this story on the study of collapse, which, and this is mostly talking about Europe, particularly France, following uh, the collapsologist in France. But anyway, this uh, in, in the middle of this we have we have this background information which. I don't know. Maybe I am misunderstanding uh, how many people understand what's going on on this planet. 
the belief that we are heading for some kind of all-consuming crisis is not exclusively French. Serious scientists all over the world are discussing it. Wealthy Americans are buying spots in Armageddon-proof bunkers long before the corona panic, and militant environmental and social protest movements have been on the rise every everywhere. A survey published last November, this is 11 months ago, uh, by a left-leaning French think tank found that only Italy beat France for pessimism about the future. 71% of Italians and 65% of French people agreed with the statement that, quote, civilization as we know it will collapse in the years to come. Huh. 56% of Brits agreed with that statement. 52% of Americans, 52% of Americans agreeing with the statement, civilization as we know it will collapse in the years to come, while Germans come in last on the survey with a sanguine 39% of Germans uh, being collapsologists, but of course, you know, what I love in here is, uh, is the number one picture they use to illustrate this is this young couple calling themselves collapsologists holding their brand new bundle of joy, their brand new little bundle of joy to uh, bring into the collapse, uh, knowing full well that civilization as we know it will collapse in the next few years, decided to bring a child into it. And, and several of the collapsologists they interview in this story have young children. And I am sorry, I can't remember which one of our Alert Tribes members sent me a link to this website called theworldcounts.com, theworldcounts.com, and um, asking how many babies are born each day. About 385,000 babies are born each day on this planet, according to the UN. That adds up to more than 140 million new babies per year. And I love this web. There, there's several websites that do this. You probably cannot see this where they have the number of births with the running clock where you can see every, uh, you know, a new baby being born on this planet about every quarter second, I guess. And then, uh, so you can, you know, you can check out all of these different little moving clocks. So, uh, right now, for the next uh, second, there are 7,853,704,282 people on the planet. Then, uh, how about production of man-made chemicals, tons, global, tons globally, moving about 10 times as fast. Uh, as the number of children being born, although this is increasing by uh, 100 tons every half second. Right now, uh, we are producing uh, 100 
95 billion 528 million 594 uh, thousand tons of man-made chemicals and underneath that globally this year and this this clock is rising about well about twice as fast as the number of new babies being born uh, the tons of resources extracted from earth so far this year is 69 billion 295 million 383,000 tons of resources extracted with, uh, let's see, it takes about, uh, it's, it's averaging about maybe two seconds for a thousand more tons of resources to be extracted from the earth and uh, so anyway they they go on so this is the worldcounts.com to see all the ways we're screwed but uh, if you do understand these uh, these charts and graphs and you are a collapsologist with some money to spend you will be glad to know that this $69,000 bulletproof Mercedes-Benz Sprinter can be armed with pepper spray or a sonic cannon and has an interior inspired by private aviation. And this is looking at all of the new uh, the new cars uh, being uh, retrofitted by this this group called Ad Armor. Ad Armor. Uh, they have built more than ten thousand, well retrofitted more than ten thousand cars you know to survive mad max uh with the orders piling uh piling in and you can you know do your shopping uh through here uh let's see uh ad armor's new line of mercedes sp sprinters will, quote, withstand nearly, nearly any threat, according to the van's official announcement. Uh, there's three levels of protection uh, that you can choose from, uh, including ballistic glass up to two inches thick, and armored body panels 10 times stronger than ballistic steel. And then you can also choose from a long list of add-ons such as hidden pepper spray dispensers, shocking door handles, a crowd dispersing sound cannon, hidden gun ports, and a secret escape hatch for those especially sticky situations. <laughs> yes, a secret escape hatch for those especially sticky situations. I mean, what does it do? Does it make you invisible when you, when you secretly escape from your armored vehicle? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sure orders of these will be pouring in on, uh, 
it's in three weeks from tomorrow, is it three weeks from tomorrow that Civil War uh, martial law and Mad Max begin in earnest? Uh, so you better get your order in for your own personal escape Mad Max vehicle while you still can, but uh, I've got to get back to uh, getting my own Mad Max bivouac prepared for the winter. Uh, somebody knocking at the door. What's that? That's just the wind howling. The wind howling. My guys.